Hi and welcome to my tutorial about delay alignment using the wave capture software. First I will show you two methods. The first is damn wrong and shall not be used. The second shall be avoided in my opinion as it fool you to align to reflections instead of loudspeakers. This method is found in other measurement systems, tutorials and help files. And the method is damn wrong. It aligns the top to subs with its energy peaks. And here I'm gonna show you why. We start with a top system representing of a, a high pass filter, which I have simulated, and then a sub, also simulated like a bandpass filter. You see the frequency response and here you see the, the group delay. We tick the boxes for operate on here for these two measurements and press the align delay. And they will be appear in a separate window. And <clears throat> here we go to uh, change the delay for the top and align it to so it corresponds to the energy peak of each band and you see the result here but it's not optimum and the group delay curves is far away from each other another way to see it is if we we can take the the total curve here, or the, the actually impulse response, and copy that to the capture tab. And here we can see uh, the total group delay, but we can also make a wavelet representation of this, and it looks like this. And you can see that it's far from a minimum phase uh, representation. Uh, it's more like that the, the crossover region here is like a linear phase, but the other regions are minimum phase. So it looks like this in three dimension. Okay, we go back here and try to make a a real minimum phase alignment. Uh, we find a crossover point here about 120 hertz and we uh, enter this number here and then we can use this delay finder, press that and it asks if we also should test to make a polarity re reverse. Uh, we found that the, the group delay seems to match. We can look here. The group delay match up well here. We can check the uh, wrapped face. It also match well. And uh, then we can export or copy this impulse response to the capture tab and make the same wavelet analyze here and here we clearly see that this is a minimum phase alignment because uh, it says that all frequency will start in time at the same time we can have also the three-dimensional representation here. I can show you the total group delay in phase response here. And if I move this cursor with the top system, you can see the red trace here, how the group delay will alter. But the frequency response, the blue 
trace here will be non-flat. But of course, if you if you trim the top system, you got something like a, a fake linear phase system uh, at the crossover region. But it still will be uh, two different uh, minimum phase system because a, a linear phase system should have constant group delay. Many things that it is a constant phase, but you, you can never have a constant phase. It's a, a constant group delay. And you can see that in the wavelet here that uh, the group delay represents the top of the hill of the ridge of, of the uh, wavelet. So uh, all energy it's it's centered uh, at one fixed time. Not useful to to make a linear phase system for live live PA systems because it requires an FIR uh, equalization, which must be very long, about fifty to hundred milliseconds, and you can't allow for that processing latency in such system. So the solution is to make a mixed phase system. And I will come back to that in a presentation of FIR capture. Here is the second thought about delay alignment. You should neither use wrapped phase or smoothing. Here we have a top system, raw measurement. And when I start to use uh, windowing, I prefer to, instead of using uh, the impulse response or the energy time curve, I use Kepstrom because here I can clearly see the reflection uh, from the room. And <clears throat> uh, sometimes somebody uh, like to use smoothing, of course we can apply that, but uh, I can see a problem because if we, we can look at the wrapped face like this uh, and we can see the, the, the group delay like this, it's a lot of noise and you can apply the smoothing of course here. But the problem is that you will not got the right uh, group delay curve because it will be some kind of smoothing and averaging here. So if we use a multi-time window instead, you will have the through group delay response like this. And also the wrapped face, you will uh, see that it's it's much cleaner, even if it's <clears throat> hard to see the reflection in the wrapped face because it's will be double uh, wraps when it is a, a reflection. So I prefer to to see the the group delay because every reflection here we represent by a transient in the group delay. And it also indicates that such transient uh, will not be possible to equalize because it's position dependent. And in such case, it's important to make an average over uh, many measurements. I will come to back to that in an, another presentation. Here is the sub in the same system. And uh, if we look at the group delay, it's very noisy, of course. And we have the same problem here that if you make a, a smoothing, you will mess up the phase and group delay 
uh, measurement. So don't use that, use the multi-time windowing instead. And here you'll see the, the response. And one trick to uh, make it more visible is to, to use the face blanking. So you cut away uh, the face information and group delay and so on. When the uh, level have dropped about 30 dB, when uh, the level have dropped so much, the face have, have no influence on the response at all, as it even if it's in reverse polarity, it only makes maybe maximum a quarter of dB to the frequency response. And then we use these two measurements and go to the delay alignment like this. Here we have the sub which need to be delayed to be aligned and uh, one common uh, thing is to use rubbed face like this. I will lower the, the, the level to increase the visibility a little bit. So here we go, and uh, it's not easy to to find. I can turn off the, the frequency response like this because we have a lot of reflections in the measurement, and uh, it should be here, uh, something like that. But as you see, we have a lot of double wraps in the wrapped face representation. So it's not so easy to find, and the risk is that if you align with wrap face, you will align your system to some reflection instead. So if you instead turn on the, the group delay, uh, then you can see that even if we have all these transients in the traces, uh, you can make an asymptote to this curve and, and see that it, it shall be something like this. We can also test the uh, automatic delay finder here. Uh, I have noticed that the crossover shall be around 130 Hertz. So if we do like this, you can see that the finder uh, we suggest uh, uh, a delay of 15 millisecond, uh, but we will also check with a polarity reverse of the sub. But uh, you got this warning here, but that uh, will provide a longer uh, delay time. So we, we pick the first one instead. Look like this. And then, then we can check the frequency response. It, it will look, you see the total curve here will align at the crossover point. And here is the um, wrapped face. Of course, we can increase the visibility by moving this face reference closer to it. So we got less wraps but it doesn't help so much. You, can, you can't uh, determine the, the alignment delay by using wrapped face in this case. So what is wrapped face? If we turn on an unwrapped face, it looks like this. The problem is that it starts here at <clears throat> about 20 degrees and it stops at over 2000 degrees. So it's very hard to see details. The reason why we have this curve here is that um, the phase is linear with frequency. So if we change the scale here to linear frequency 
scale, you see that this is straight uh, slope. And if we turn on the wrapped face, the, the idea is that you should see more details because if you don't wrap the face, I mean, already here it's about 2000 degrees. So you need to see, zoom in this to see details. And maybe if you print it out, you need a 10 meter long paper to do that. And that's the idea with wrapped face, but that you zoom in and this uh, vertical lines here has actually no, no information because it's only this curve here which contain the, the, contains the information. Compare that to the group delay, there you can see uh, how uh, the time varies. Uh, through the system. I will show you an animation uh, to see how the, the wrapped face is done. Okay, here is the animation. Uh, here you see the uh, unwrapped face and then we cut it in pieces to form the wrapped face, and that's it. Some lecturer thinks that is uh, have something to do with the Nyquist helix, and uh, but uh, and they are bloody wrong, of course. Other thinks it's uh, another helix. I want to show you some further features. First, it is the face reference. You will find it when you, you move the, the, the uh, uh, impulse with the uh, least uh, propagation delay. And then you see a yellow cursor which can be moved. And in that uh, way you have a better visibility. You see that on the group delay and it's even more important for the wrapped face presentation that you will have less wraps. So you have a better graphical resolution and <coughs> you can also di dial in the face reference uh, delay here. Uh, the other feature is that you have two cursors here in the frequency domain, so you can zoom in the crossover region like this. And that's also useful draft face. So you can you can see the, the, the crossover. Uh, another feature is that these cursors can be used to filter out the impulse response <coughs> in the crossover region. So you can apply vanfast filters uh, to this area and in that way you have uh, ability to, to, to see how the impulse response look like and uh, here is a trick I learned from <clears throat> a good friend called Paul Bauman he had been director of Hell Acoustic and GBL before and that is that if you, you filter out the impulse response then you can have a very accurate uh, alignment by taking the second oscillation of the top and then align that to the uh, largest uh, swing of the, the sub like this. So that is a fine tuning alignment because what the wrapped face to 
so you can see that it's a, a little trick to, to do it. But of course it's very hard to do that if there are a lot of reflections in the measurement. Here are some conclusions. Don't use the energy peak alignment. That will give you a lot of time smearing. Instead use the minimum phase alignment. Avoid wrapped phase. Because if you have a lot of reflections in the measurement, then it's hard to find the right alignment. Don't use the smoothing that will not make the right uh, group delay or phase traces. Use the multi-time windowing instead. And use the group delay for the alignment. Wave capture software is one of the few measurement software which uh, show the, the true uh, group delay. There is a delay alignment tutorial on, on my website, so you can download and see further. It's, it looks like this. And then I thank you for watching and I look forward for your comments.